Hi, everyone. Can you see my slide? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Asaf Dubstein. I'm a product solution architect at VMware. And I'll let Phoebe, uh, my co-presenter here, introduce herself. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Phoebe Kim. I'm a senior cloud solutions architect at VMware. Okay. And today we'd like to talk about um, uh, workload migration to VMware Cloud, but specifically about how to automate that migration to make it a bit more repeatable and, um, and easier to consume by the, by the enterprise. So what we're going to talk about shortly is just a quick overview of what is VMware HCX with VMware Cloud on AWS. We'll talk about migration methodologies, way of planning, and then we'll do some demos of HCX deployment and configuration and workload migrations. So first thing I'd like to talk about VMware HCX with VMware Cloud uh, on AWS. So if, you, if you're not uh, familiar with VMware Cloud on AWS, it's basically um, an SDDC that is managed by VMware and resides in AWS data centers to allow for a much more managed experience and scalable experience of the VMware SDDC. HCX is a solution that VMware has that can really allow the simplification of migrations from different vSphere environments. And that can be from on-prem to on-prem, but also from on-prem to uh, VMware Cloud offerings such as VMware Cloud on AWS. So um, the deployment of HCX on VM, VMware Cloud on AWS is very simple. There's, uh, we'll go over the, the individual components. And also there is a small component that needs to be deployed on-prem to allow for that connectivity between the sites. Some of the services that VMware HCX uh, provides is a hybrid interconnect service that really allows that connectivity between the two sites. We can also provide a WAN optimization service in case there's low latency between the two sites and, and really optimize that migration to make sure that um, it is not hindered by remote sites or low bandwidth sites. We can use still vMotion across different sites and across different clouds, which is really incredible when you see it for the first time, because vMotion, we tend to think about it as something that happens within the data center. And we can now move live workloads um, across uh, sometimes geographical regions. Um, and we'll talk about each one of those services a bit more in detail uh, later. We also have a bulk migration service that really allows um, a minimum, it, it's kind of a warm type of migration that really allows for a minimal downtime of a workload, but to do it really at scale and with kind of seeding replication and leveraging technologies that, that we've had uh, for a long time. We can also combine kind of like the, the best of both world of both doing vMotion and bulk migration with replication assisted vMotion. We can also extend the network that allows us really to move entire segments without any uh, impact or any changes for the existing uh, virtual machines. And we can also move using OS assisted mi migration from non vSphere hypervisors to vMore cloud offerings. And with that, I'll hand it off to Phoebe to talk about the migration methodology. All right. Thanks, Asaf. So we just want to go over um, you know, an overview of how you can migrate to from your on-premises environment to the cloud environment. And it applies to essentially any any migrations you would do really to a VMware cloud environment. Um, so first phase will be in planning and designing the target environment. So I would honestly say if you plan really well, the rest of your phase or um, your journey to the cloud should be you know, pretty smooth, right? So I would definitely say or recommend putting a lot of effort into planning and designing everything correctly and making sure that it meets all your requirements. First, I, of course, identify your requirements, meet everything, um, and making sure that the target environment will be able to support all of your workloads and your needs um, from the design perspective. So uh, part of planning 
one of the most important things that you would have to do to prepare for a migration is to do application dependency mapping. You want to identify all your workloads, all your applications, and make sure you understand how your applications communicate with one another. So for example, you know, you, you have application one, two, and three, and they all communicate and depend on one another to function properly. You don't want to migrate them in a different uh, time frame, right? You normally want to group them together and migrate them together so that um, the performance is not affected after the migration. So those are some of the things that you want to think about when you are planning for your migration. And of course, after that, you would want to build your target environment. You would want to build and test the migration path as well. There are different ways that you can, or different connectivity options you can use between your on-premises environment and the cloud environment um, for you to migrate your workloads. So you want to build and test that out, make sure everything is working well. And then assuming that the planning and building and testing and all of this is done properly, then technically the migration part should be actually the easiest part, right? Obviously it's not one click. I'm never going to say it's a one click process, but yeah, you should be able to migrate your workloads uh, properly. And then of course, validate once they are migrated into the target environment that they are functioning properly um, as, as intended. Once you have it migrated, uh, you could also focus on optimizing, oh, sorry, um, optimizing the workloads, um, making sure they are right size, having the correct amount of resources. Um, and also you have the opportunity to maybe refactor or modernize your applications as well, since you are closer now to the cloud services. So the next portion um, will be wave planning. I just want to focus more on this um, because there is a VMware tool that allows uh, that, that simplifies this process for you. So if you are familiar with the vRealize suite, there is a product called vRealize Network Insight or VRNI. Uh, this essentially, you connect your environments to v vRNI and it would um, analyze the traffic flows essentially that happens within your environment. Um, it gives you a lot of insights into the communications that happen within your data center. And it helps you map these applications depending on how the workloads are communicating with one another. So you can perform application dependency mapping with VRNI, and then it would suggest what the applications, um, or it, would, it would suggest which workloads belong to, let's say which applications, or you know, suggest some groupings um, for your workloads. And from there, you would obviously validate um, the findings and then create the applications within VRNI. Now, once you have these applications there, you can integrate VRNI with VMware HCX that Asaf just talked about um, so that you can export the applications from VRNI and import them as HCX mobility groups. Now, mobility groups essentially is an implementation of your waves, the migration waves that you've created for your applications. So you can use an integration script um, or you can use APIs to do this um, or simplify this process. And we'll show you one of the VMware flings that you can use um, for this VRNI and HCX integration as well. And I'll pass it back to Asaf. Okay, yeah. So uh, we talked briefly about HCX, but what does it really take to deploy HCX and configure it to make sure that we can actually migrate workloads. So the first step is to deploy HCX in VMware Cloud on AWS. And that is, I know Phoebe said she doesn't like it, but this is literally just pressing one button. And there's a workflow that starts that is part of the automated platform that configures all of the, the workloads, uh, the profiles that are needed and, and the appliances. Um, next, we need to create firewall rules to allow connectivity to HCX. And that can be over the internet, ideally over a private connection such as VPN or direct connect. We can also, um, we, later we need to deploy HCX in the on-prem data center to really allow that connectivity between the two, the two vCenters and um, provide the ability to, mig to, to migrate workloads. 
Next, we need to create something that is called compute and network profiles that we will show in a demo. But basically, um, HCX is not um, an imperative solution. It's a declarative solution. So instead of saying, I will have um, five appliances and each one will have this IP and this password, et cetera, uh, we create profiles. And we say, this is a network profile which defines which networks will be connected and the IP addresses that they might have. And this is a compute profile that defines where um, those appliances are going to sit. And then once we create that connectivity between the site, HCX manager just deploys those appliances based on the profiles that we created, which will allows for um, much more seamless integration and kind of we need to worry less about specific and individual VMs because HCX can just redeploy them as necessary. Um, next, we connect the two sites and create a site pairing. And then we create something that's called a service mesh. And that is where we actually enable all of the services that we talked about and um, to, to really allow for, and, and then we can really start the, the migration. So now we're gonna show some of that process automated uh, using Terraform. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to use the chat. Um, and I will stop sharing this and start sharing the demo. Okay, so what I have here is a um, Terraform script that um, we're using to automate some of the, the deployment that we talked about for, uh, for HCX. So Terraform is uh, comprised of mainly a configuration file that really defines the desired state that we want from our environment. So the first thing that we state is um, the, the providers that we use. In this case, we're only going to use the HCX providers, but there's a lot of other providers for, uh, for vSphere, for example, for VMC, and of course, for other um, non-VMware uh, solutions. And then we can specify individual resources, and I will go over them in a quick second. Now, this, this is at the end of the day, a text file. So if we want to have multiple environments and, and reuse that into uh, multiple times, um, we don't necessarily want to create a single uh, state file for each environment. So we can create something that's called uh, variables. So, uh, sorry, variables. Um, so here, instead of um, defining the exact uh, username and password, I can point to a variable file where I define the different variables and what do they mean. Now here, this is just, I can provide a default value, but in our case, for example, we have multiple labs, we have multiple environments. So I, even though I have the variable configured, I wanna be able to use multiple values. So we can also point it to a value file that this is just a dummy one. These are not the actual passwords. Um, I will use an, another one that has all the actual values that we're gonna use but I can specify um, the, the individual values for each variable that I want. And then every time I run um, Terraform plan or Terraform apply, for example, I can go and uh, point it to a different variable, uh, sorry, value file for each individual environment. And then I only have to change, uh, you know, four or five lines here instead of, uh, maintaining an entire new uh, config file for each environment. Um, so first, let's go over uh, quickly the environment that, um, that I'll be using. And then just because it takes a bit of time to configure everything, we'll run the, the plan. And then while it's running and deploying, I'll go over the actual uh, Terraform file. 
So here I have my, my home lab, and that is just running here in my apartment in Chicago. And I will be connecting that to a VMware Cloud on AWS deployment that we have running in Oregon. Now, if I go in my environment to, um, to HCX, we can see that currently there is nothing really configured other than the HCX appliance, the manager is deployed, but it is not connected to, um, to any remote site. I don't have any profiles configured. I don't have any service meshes. Nothing is configured here. So um, if we go to Terraform, the first thing we'll do, um, and that is um, we'll run Terraform plan. And here you can see that if I won't specify this uh, variable file, it won't use, um, it will just use values that are configured here by default in, um, in the variable file. But uh, if I want to use different values for different environments, I just need to point to that one. So first thing we'll run plan. And what plan really does with Terraform is kind of runs it in, as a, in a what if scenario. Like this is what I'm gonna run. This is the current state of your environment. I'm gonna add these, these resources. I'm gonna destroy these resources, et cetera. So once we verify that it's configuring everything that we want according to, to the values that we want, we can actually run Terraform apply. And what this will do is it will take the, the plan right now compared to the, the existing state and make the necessary changes, which is again, a much more declarative way of providing automation versus an imperative of do one, two, and three in a sequential order. So we're gonna run it. It's gonna still run the, the plan and kind of like let us know what it's planning on doing. And here, we just need to let it know that, yes, we actually want to do it and then we can start. So while this is creating things and we can go back and forth to, um, to um, the HCX portal and see what it's actually creating, in the meantime, we can go over the configuration of the Terraform file. So first we just configured what, which one is the local HCX server. And that is the server in my environment. So I can provide it again from the variable file, the IP address or URL, um, the credentials, and then also um, there's credentials if we need to do some things for the actual appliance itself and not vCenter, but we're not really using that here. Then we can configure um, what is the remote HCX server that we want to pair with uh, to really provide that site pairing and visibility, and we will see that uh, in a bit. Next, um, HCX has this concept of network profiles, and I mentioned that we can identify which um, for each network use case that HCX requires, for example, to connect to the vMotion network or replication network, um, we can provide different profiles for that instead of just saying, oh, this appliance will use this IP, this appliance will use this IP. So I'm creating several network profiles here and I'll go over one and the rest of them are um, pretty much the same. So this is for the management, for the appliances to communicate with, um, with HCX manager. So we define, of course, what site pairing this uh, belongs to. We can configure uh, the name of the port group and um, the name of the, the network profile, the MTU. And here we can configure the IP ranges and we can have multiple IP ranges. That can be an a single IP or it can be multiple depending on your individual environment. It's very robust. And then we can configure the, the gateway, prefix, DNS, and DNS suffix. Um, also something that I used is dependency in resources to make sure that um, Terraform doesn't try to configure the network profile before we have a um, site pairing, for example. Um, hey, Asaf. Yep. Um, one of the participants, Chris, has a question. Uh, is this an official supported Terraform provider or is it community driven? This is a community driven one. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's all based and developed on official HCX APIs, but it is a community-driven um, um, module. And 
Um, and then similar here, we have the uplink profile. It's exactly the same note that right now there's no individual role for each one of those. It's just a network profile. We'll provide context for it in a later stage. Um, the vMotion one. And, um, and now we have the, um, the compute profile. And this is where we really take the network profiles and provide them with some meaning. Um, so we give a name for the compute profile. And then here we say, what is going to be used as a management network? What is going to be used as a replication network? And this can sometimes be, and you can see here, for example, for replication and management, I'm using the same network profile. Depending on your network configuration, you can have anywhere from a single network profile to dozens, depending on your cluster environment, et cetera. And here we provide the enable the different services that we showed later. So we say, okay, with this one, we do want an interconnect. We want WAN optimization. We want all of these, um, all of these services enabled and we can enable more, less, um, whatever we want in for that specific compute profile. And again, dependencies. And then we create the service mesh, which really deploys the appliances that provide the services that we want. So the service mesh is actually pretty, uh, pretty simple. We just tell it, okay, we want to use this site pairing and this compute profile, and then it will just go and deploy. There are some other things that um, we can, we can enable, for example, number of network extension appliances. Um, if we are using the WAN optimization, we can limit the bandwidth. And we can also choose to enable or disable services at the, um, the service mesh level, not just the compute profile, depending on, for example, if you want to reuse that compute profile, um, but not enable all the services for another service mesh. And then the second thing that I'm, I'm doing here is also we mentioned that we can extend networks. So I can also do that using Terraform. I can just say, okay, for this service mesh, I want to extend this network. And these are the parameters. This, this is the gateway. This is the mask. And I'm creating two network extensions, one using something called mobility optimized networking, which we will cover later, and one that isn't. And we can see right now that it's creating the network extensions. So if we quickly go to our um, to to my my source environment, the on-prem environment, and we can go to site pairing, and we can see that we have a new site pairing created where we didn't have one before. And if I go to interconnect, we can see that we have uh, not only a functioning service mesh, but also all the components that it depended on. So compute profile network profiles, uh, and they're all created here where we had nothing uh, before. And the network extensions, they do take a bit of time, so I don't think we'll wait for them to, to finish, but um, we can see that they are being created right now as um, Terraform is still waiting for, for the acknowledgement. So there's, um, there aren't any questions, I think I'll, uh, Pass it back to Phoebe. All right. Actually, um, did you want to put the slides up for the workload migration? Uh, yes, I will. One second. I guess since you were talking about HCX network extension to begin with, I'll I'll let you kick it off if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. Can you see the slides? Yep. Okay. So, um, workload migration, uh, we talked about network extension quickly. And uh, basically, what network extension does is it allows as to use the same network ranges that we have been using on-prem without needing to re-IP any of the workloads. And this can be really uh, powerful if for two use cases, uh, mainly if we have workloads that are difficult to re-IP if there's 
some some issues that usually are get, getting generated or if sometimes there's um, licenses tied to a specific IP or NIC, et cetera. Um, or if we want to just migrate, like if completely evacuate uh, a network segment. So we don't have to re-IP. So what we will do is we'll use those appliances created by the service mesh to extend the network between um, between the, uh, both sites. And then as you, as you can see, the network on the uh, secondary site, uh, on the cloud side is disconnected. So that means that for any traffic that it will need to, to go outside of the, uh, that specific segment, it will still have to use the on-prem router. Um, so there is definitely, this ties back to the planning that, that Phoebe mentioned that is really important that depending, we need to plan this correctly and do wave planning correctly to make sure that we don't add latency to, uh, to applications if they need to communicate with other, um, with other segments. Um, one feature that does um, enable to us to leverage the cloud router is called mobility optimized networking. And that is just something that needs to be enabled once we extend the network and also enabled per VM. So it is really robust. You can do it just for one VM. You can do it for all of them. Uh, but basically it provides kind of egress optimization. And for example, if this VM here, um, I didn't have my pen running. that if um, this VM here um, in VMC on AWS will need to communicate with another VM in the other segment in 10, 10, 20, instead of going all the way back on-prem and then back to VMware Cloud on AWS router, it will just use the local um, ATX, uh, sorry, the local VMC um, router. And I'll yeah. pass it on to you with the rest of that. Um, yeah, uh, and before we go into migration mm -hmm. types, we have another question. So do you consider a network extension a long-term solution for stretched networking? For example, can I use it instead of layer two VPNs long-term? Um, I, I mean, I, I can I'll start off or do you can just take it, <laughs> it's fine. I, I would say it depends on your, um, ideally network extension shouldn't be used long-term because there are some, like we men mentioned, like it incurs latency. And it, so if, if it, you're using it for bursting, then it makes sense. If you're using it for a permanent solution, I would say maybe it's time to rethink kind of like, do we, maybe we need to re-IP, re maybe we need to, to um, extend the, you know, split it to multiple segments, mostly because um, there's, at the moment, the network extension appliances don't provide any redundancy. So uh, if there is a failure, it does mean that there's going to be um, downtime incurred until HA will bring up the appliances on the other, uh, the other side. Um, in addition to, and this is, previously it was also an issue when every time we needed to update the, um, the network appliance, but that has been remediated in... Uh, 4.0 with uh, HCX 4.0 with providing something called in-service upgrades, which is one of my favorite features in 4.0 because it provided problem for uh, you know a solution for that exact problem. But even with layer two extension with VPN uh, that does provide some sort of um, some sort of uh, high availability, there's still this latency that you have between the sites that can really cause performance problems if not planned correctly. So I guess, again, the question is, it really depends on the specific use case and, and I'll be happy to take it offline as well. Cool. All right, so we'll quickly go over the migration types that HCX offers. So the first one to start is cold migration, which means you are migrating the powered off virtual machines from the on-premises environment to the VMware cloud on AWS SDDC. So this will be for your you know, non-critical workloads, uh, maybe test dev workloads, anything you don't need to um, provide a very high availability requirement for. So this will be one type. Now, the next one is the warm uh, migration or bulk migration. So this you can use 
to um, to migrate multiple workloads at once. So in the in the background, it first replicates the virtual machines from your on-premises environment to the VMware cloud environment. And then once they are replicated, then they basically do a switch over and do a cutover to the instances in VMware cloud on AWS. So this one, I call it warm migration because it's not that you won't have any uh, downtime because during that cutover, you will have a, a li very little minimal downtime, right? Uh, it's as if you're basically rebooting your virtual machines in the target environment. So minimal, but yes, there is still, still some downtime. So it depends on the workloads, how much you know downtime they can tolerate if you'd like to use bulk migration, but it works really well for um, if you're trying to migrate a lot of virtual machines at once. Now, if you have very critical workloads that you cannot afford any downtime for whatever reason, there are uh, two main types um, of hot migration that you can use with HCX. So one would be vMotion, essentially what Asaf talked about, right? That you, um, instead of doing it just within your data center, you would do it between the on-premises and the VMware cloud on AWS, and it's done serially. You can also use replication-assisted vMotion. Um, which is more like what the diagram really showed is you can um, use, or sorry, vMotion, not exactly, migrate multiple workloads at once without any town downtime. So essentially it's a mix of vMotion and the bulk migration I talked about. So in the background, it replicates multiple vir virtual machines for you at once in parallel, but then instead of, um, and, and then it would essentially do vMotion serially per all of those virtual machines that have been replicated from the on-premises data center to VMware Cloud on AWS. So this is for you know, critical workloads or production workloads, um, anything that may, may not be able to suffer any downtime. So these are some of the workload migration types and we can automate migrating your virtual machines from on-prem to VMware Cloud um, as well. I believe you could do it with Terraform too, right? But just for just to show another tool essentially that you can use to automate, I'm going to show a demo of um, using Power PowerShell. So let me bring that up. One moment. I'm assuming you can see my screen. <laughs> Okay, thanks. All right, so this is the on-premises environment that I have um, in, yep. So I already have HCX set up, right? It's just similar to what Asaf went through. You know, you deploy your HCX connector in your on-premises environment and you have HCX set up in the VMware cloud on AWS environment. So what I did uh, just to set up uh, the demo, I have a, a distributed port group uh, with VLAN a VLAN back distributed port group. I have two virtual machines on there. We'll move one of them. <clears throat> so if you were to do it manually, of course, you could just go to HCX here. I already have the site pairing and the you know service mesh all set up that a soft auto you know did it uh, with automation using Terraform. I've actually um, extended the network as well for that VLAN segment where the virtual machines are on. So um, the network is already extended, which it will show once it loads, but you can also see it. Um, this is a VMware cloud on AWS environment. So the 192.168.52, that one subnet, this is the one that I have extended from on-premises environment to VMware cloud on AWS uh, with mobility optimized networking enabled. So you can see that here. This can be done with PowerShell as well. I've just done it ahead of time just to save some time, but let's look at the PowerShell script. So here um, I just start off with prep, like, you know, prepping the modules that you need um, in order to be able to use uh, the, the modules um, for HCX. So here I'm loading the Power CLI HCX module. Uh, essentially it's just checking to see if the, if the module is available. And then if it's not, it fails and tells you, you know, like, hey, you know, please, make sure that you have this thing, right? Um, so it first checks through the module, make sure you check that before obviously um, going through the script. But the first thing you do is you have to connect to the HCX instance. So this is where you provide all your variables, right? 
So I have the source HCX. So source meaning where you are migrating from. So this is the on-premises environment HCX uh, FQDN. I have the HCX username and password um, here. I know this is on-prem, so I'm just using my VMware <laughs> one bang password. Um, now here, this is providing the destination HCX. So for us, this is the, um, oh, sorry, vCenter to begin with and then HCX. So this is uh, the vCenter and HCX cloud for your VMware cloud on AWS environment because that's the target environment, right? Where we are moving our workloads to. So you used um, the command connect dash HCX server to connect to the source uh, HCX first. And then you need some site objects that you will use um, when you do the actual migration. So you get the source HCX information and also the destination HCX information here. And these are just objects that you would get um, from these commands. Now you can create network extension, as I mentioned earlier. So here are some variables that you would need to create the network extension. So um, you would have to provide the name of the network extension appliance that HCX deployed during your service mesh. Um, you would just get that name from the UI. Uh, and then you would have the name of the segment that you want to extend from your on-premises data center to the VMware cloud on AWS environment. You provide the gateway for that subnet and the subnet mask. Then this is the section where it actually creates the new network extension. So you would provide the HCX gateway, the appliance, and then the segment. Um, and here, this is the, the command essentially to create the network extension um, using, and obviously using the variables that you've created um, a little bit ago above. So if I run this, this will extend uh, this network. Obviously I've already done that beforehand manually. So I'm, I just want to show you what, uh, what it looks like. And then you can migrate a virtual machines. Now here I'm only migrating just one virtual machines, but you can create you know, a for loop or whatever to you know, iterate through an array of virtual machines, right? And then uh, migrate multiple virtual machines at once. But for now, so some of the variables that you would need uh, you need the destination compute container. So it's essentially where you want to move the workload to in the target site. Um, same with destination folder, you can specify which folder the virtual machine should go to. Uh, you can do the destination data store. So which data store to use in the target site. Now you, you then provide the source network where the virtual machine is in your source site. So currently in your on-premises, where is this virtual machine, right? So this is where I provide the name of that segment um, and then the type. In, in this case, I'm using a virtual port group. So um, that's what I would put in here. You put the destination that, uh, network. So where do you want your uh, virtual machine to land in the target site? So you put the name of that segment. Um, this is that extended segment I showed you a little bit earlier, uh, which is an NSXT segment in VMC on AWS. And then you create that network mapping to show um, that you're going from the source to destination uh, network. Now you specify the virtual machine. So this is really where if you want to um, migrate multiple virtual machines, you, would cr you could create an array essentially of these virtual machine objects and then essentially go through them um, to migrate them. Uh, but here I'm just using one. So I'm going to uh, migrate VLAN 52 PKVM01. And this is where you uh, specify more details about each, um, about the migration itself. So here you can choose the migration type. So I'm using vMotion for, uh, for this virtual machine, but you can use the bulk migration, you can use cold migration, you know, whatever type essentially that fits the, the purpose of this migration. And then you would utilize all the variables that you've defined above to give um, information about, you know, the source side, target side, you know, all of that, uh, all of that fun stuff. And these are some of the more um, custom settings essentially for your virtual machines that you can identify, uh, specify as well for your virtual machine for this migration. So essentially to run this, um, you would just open PowerShell and I first have to go I don't know if you can see this actually, but I have to first 
know where I'm going. Um, okay, yeah, no, here it is. Okay, so I'm in the directory where my uh, PowerShell script is. I'll run this uh, uh, PowerShell script that I just went, um, walked through with you. So if I run this script, it should write something out if I spelled it correctly. So as you can see, it's first connecting to the sort site HCX. I guess it's a little tiny, but. So you can see here, um, I have the script write out, you know, which server that is connecting to with which user um, and the name of the source uh, BC. So it's connecting to the sort site first and collecting the objects. And we'll give it a little time, <laughs> but all right. What's happening? Oh, okay, so now it's getting the destination objects. So it's writing out those destination um, vCenter, right? Which is the VMware Cloud on AWS uh, SDDC vCenter. Now it is writing out all the uh, destination or migration details essentially, right? So it's the destination compute, it's the compute resource pool, destination folder, the data store. I have the network names and the network mapping, right? So we're going from the, the distributed port group here to the extended network. It tells you which VM it's migrating. And now it tests the migration first. It would do that if you do it manually in the UI as well. So it would validate to make sure everything is good. It says the validation is successful. So once it has that, it will start the migration. And here is like full detail essentially of the migration that you've just initiated. So you have the site, everything, you know, you have the VM name, you have everything in terms of where it's going to, any customized um, specifications about the migration for this VM that you've created. So it has all of that information. And if we now go actually to the on-premises um, HCX, we could go to migration and then you can see here, this is the service mesh between the on-premises environment and the VMware Cloud on AWS environment. So this is the migration that you know we've kicked off with our Power, um, PowerShell script. So let me just close these so that you can see, focus on it a little more. So as you can see, the VLAN 52 um, virtual machine 01, the migration has started, vMotion transfer is in progress. So. It takes a little bit, um, I would say like five to 10 minutes. Obviously that depends on a lot of things, right? Your connectivity, um, your network bandwidth, your virtual machine size, all of that fun stuff. So we're, I just wanted to show how you can kick this off, but um, that's really it for my demo today. So I'll stop my sharing. So yes, there we go. So thank you, thanks, thank you everybody for attending. Um, we are here actually for another, you know, five minutes or so. If you have any questions, but otherwise, thank you so much, and just let us know if you guys need anything. Maybe we'll put in like um, our contact info or something like that. You want me to? Mm -hmm. Asaf, do you want to put your um, email or something on Twitter? Yeah. I don't know. I need to remember my Twitter. Your... I forget <laughs> my, what my Twitter handle is as well. So that's okay. No, that's your, just, it's just your name. I keep forgetting your uh, email address. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So yeah, our information's in the chat. Um, thank you again for attending. And if we don't have any questions, um, have a great rest of the day. Thanks everyone. Bye.